edición de la Lucha Libre. Este que les habla es Michael Morales Torres, integrante del equipo de Lucha Libre Online. Y tenemos el enorme privilegio de presentarles a nuestro invitado en la tarde de hoy del Paso Texas para el Mundo, representando la dinastía Guerrero, la leyenda de la industria de la lucha libre, Chavo Guerrero Jr. Y el hijo de Doña Melida acompañándonos en la tarde de hoy, Hugo Sabinovich. Guys, how are you doing today? Ahí está la gira ahí, ahí está Eddie Guerrero, Chavo Guerrero viene, la plancha se ha visto, la cuenta de la visto, uno, dos, tres, la tiro ahí, lo ha hecho, campeones mundiales de la WWE. Brother, man, we got to get you some uh, anti, some de antidepressants or something, man, and bring it down a little bit. <laughs> no, no, I love it. I, I love it, brother. That's awesome, man. Hugo, I love you, man. Been a bit of minutes since we've seen each other, but uh, very, very cool uh, to see you and be on your podcast, guys. Yes, I mean the fans love you guys. Uh, uh, I mean to have you here, uh, it's an honor. Uh, and just, just the, the Guerrero last day what it means the sacrifices your whole family did to entertain audiences from mexico to alaska to japan and to do it with such an excellent 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 work ethic good to have you my brother hey man i thanks thank you for being here but you know it's it's the sacrifices was was the the fans you know they sacrificed their time and their money to come see us so that's the way i look at it man we're our sacrifices were little compared to theirs so la manera que dice el chavo es que el sacrificio es a los aficionados, que ellos son los que vinieron, pagaron sus boletos, los que los siguieron, los que aman la lucha libre, y es para ellos, para los fanáticos. Awesome. So, Chavo, let's start with the first question, and that's basically uh, about your beginnings. How did you start in the pro wrestling industry? Who inspired you? I mean, you come from a such a prestigious dynasty, which is the Guerrero dynasty, which we're going to be talking about in a little while, but... How do you start in this industry and who was the person or who were the people to inspire you? ¿Quién inspiró a Chavo Guerrero para convertirse en luchador profesional? Mi familia, of course. Come on. It was just my family. <laughs> I grew up with a wrestling ring in my backyard. So wow. Literally, we learned, me and Eddie learned to walk in the wrestling ring. And that's the truth. My family is what inspired me. I wanted to me and I just wanted to be like them and be wrestlers like them. So all of my uncles, like a Roddy Piper and, you know, an Andre the Giant and a, and a Mil Mascaras and a, wow. all those people were there were just part of the family. I'm already hating you, Chavo. I'm hating you already. Imagínate, dice él y Eddie, él y Eddie salir al patio de la casa, tenían un ring y de momento, no solamente su familia de grandes estrellas, sino que los famosos tíos, un Piper, un Mil Máscaras, un André el Gigante con ellos de pequeñito. Wow, that's such an enormous privilege. I mean, you had the opportunity to be surrounded by the best of the best of all times. Not only your family, but your tíos, as you call them, who were uh, going frequently to your house. And speaking about the Guerrero family, Gori was the person who started all this incredible tradition. Uh, there are a few people in your family that wrestle, the, which are uh, Mando, Hector, Eddie. Uh, there's also Chavo Guerrero Sr., Chavo Classic, which is your father. Then it's you, Chavo Guerrero Jr., Shaul Guerrero. Uh, what's the importance of the Guerrero dynasty, not only to the pro wrestling industry in, in North America, in the United States, but for the Lucha Libre tradition? What does the Guerrero family mean? ¿Qué significa el legado de la familia Guerrero? El, no solamente el apellido, sino lo que ha trascendido, no solamente para México, Estados Unidos, sino para el mundo entero. You know, for, for us, um, the importance was just representing la raza, just being represent, representatives of them. I always had, um, you know, we just, me and Andy wanted to be wrestlers and that was But then when we started having fans come up to us and tell us, hey, thank you for what you do for, for La Raza, for, for the, you know, the Hispanics, for the Mexican people, then we had to stop thinking about just us. It wasn't just about us. It was about a whole race, a whole culture that we were representing because a lot of times they don't have people in Hollywood or in sports. So when that started, when we started realizing that, that's when we had to pivot our way of thinking and thinking that that we needed to um, to, to represent them. Si primero dice el chavo que era cuestión de, de lo de la familia, lo de sí, acercar bien a la raza, pero cuando los fans, la raza se acercaba a ellos, le decían gracias 
por representarnos, por, por, por ponernos en alto. Entonces tuvieron que ellos cambiar, darle un toque diferente a lo que ellos hacían, percatándose los guerreros que no era solamente de la familia Guerrero, sino que era de representar a los mexicanos y a todos los latinos y tomó una importancia más grande para el empeño que ellos iban a desarrollar en el ring. Awesome. Uh, this question is for both of you guys, for Hugo and Chavo, since you are, you've been in this industry for a while. Uh, you've been in this industry since it was, uh, since the first match, it was, was important. Every person in the roster had opportunities. Every person uh, had a role and they stick to it and they uh, perform. Uh, everyone was an important part of that roster. But today things uh, change, maybe because it's an overproduced roster, not only in WWE, but the pro wrestling industry as a general. Uh, maybe I want to quote uh, Moody, uh, who is a booker here in Puerto Rico. He said uh, the recent interview that uh, maybe because the fans are the ones that are backstage now, it's because some of the, the arenas are, are getting emptier. Uh, so my question for you guys is, uh, what the pro wrestling industry specifically, today wrestlers, need to do in order to improve the product and attract more people to get a bigger fan base as it was when Chavo was wrestling, when Hugo was wrestling. Una pregunta de Michael para eh, Chavo y para este servidor sobre qué tienen que hacer los luchadores para mejorar el producto de la lucha libre profesional. Citó Michael también a Moody, que fue Booker en Puerto Rico, y Dolo A, Dolo Dolo y, en, y, en, y con Conan en México, con, con Triple A, de que dijo Moody que eh, lo que pasa es que a veces las arenas están vacías porque hay más de los fanáticos siendo parte de las oficinas, dijo él. Pero la pregunta es, ¿qué deben hacer luchadores, o en este caso nosotros, para mejorar eh, el producto de Lucha Libre? For me, I think um, the wrestlers now are better athletes and they can do more moves, but they're not as good as, te as telling stories as they were prior. Oh, one and more time. Chau, hit, hit me with that one more time. Yeah. So, so the wrestlers now, I believe, are better athletes and they can do more moves, but they're not as good as storytellers as they were in the ring. The moves help tell the stories, but they aren't the story. So they need to connect with the fans. And, and that's where the wrestlers today, I believe, are, are lacking. They're, they're, they're not able to connect with the fans. And it's like Hollywood. It's like a movie. Explosions help tell a story, but the explosions themselves are not the story. There's movies that I've seen that there's not one explosion in the movie And they, they tell me such great stories and, and they have me at the seat of my pants. Like um, I saw um, Bridges of Madison County one time. Not one explosion, not one high spot, if you want to call it. But at the end, when Clint Eastwood was in his car and Meryl Streep was at the other car and it was raining and Clint almost left to go get her, I felt it like, oh, my God, like oh, I was connected to these, to these characters That's what we're missing in wrestling today. Bueno, Chavo, Chavo ha, ha pegado un punto, pero muy, pero muy eh, válido. Le dije que lo repitiera dos veces. Chavo ha sido estrella en el ring, pero ha sido, ha sido estrella creativa también, además de la familia, que representa lo que sus ojos han visto. Muy pocos ojos lo han visto, desde el, la parte familiar hasta la parte del negocio. Y él admite que los luchadores de hoy son mejores atletas que los del pasado, pero no conectan bien con el público, ni saben contar o relatar una historia. Y él habló que... Hollywood pasa el caso de que eh, hay explosiones, pero si las explosiones no llegan, una, te llevan con una historia, las explosiones no significan nada. Habló de una película que dijo que no había ni una sola explosión, creo que eran los puentes de Madison County, que dice que de momento lo, se metió tanto en la historia y no hubo un high spot, si él mencionó, sino que hubo una verdadera historia de con, contado. And I will add to that, Chavo, that perhaps one of the things that Facebook, that Instagram and all this stuff, The, the vanity of, the, of our talent today, uh, oh my God, it's like sometimes it works on the Hollywood divas or, you know, big stars. Y le decía Chavo que también yo creo que la, la, las plataformas de, de internet, eh, las páginas de los luchadores, hacen que se crean ellos mismos su popularidad y a veces son más intocables que las estrellas de cine. I believe sometimes they believe their own stuff, uh, their own egos, and sometimes uh, they are not ready to have somebody like you or me Uh, connect with them like, hey, you gotta sell your character, your story to the fans. Y que no, no nos permiten a una persona como Chavo, 
este señor, un Conan o, otro, eh, o otra parte creativa de decirle a, a los talentos, tienen que meterse más a desarrollar la historia. Very complicated, Chavo, on today's uh, uh, scene because you have all these big contracts and uh, sometimes if you are too strong with a talent, they go right to the owner and it might cost your job the next day. Puede ser que se enoje la estrella grande y vaya al jefe y le diga, mira, Chavo está muy fuerte conmigo, Hugo está muy fuerte conmigo, Conan está muy fuerte conmigo, o Heyman está muy fuerte conmigo. Okay, talking about Heyman, he's no longer there as the creative part. A, a veces la parte que te, que te quiero decir con esto es que, le, que hay retos para Chavo, para personas como yo, de que queremos que la pasión se transmita, el storytelling, pero si el, si el talento, si el luchador o luchadora no quiere seguirlo y el promotor lo protege, el, el producto fracasa y el rating va para el piso. Yeah, so, so the fans have to, the, the wrestlers have to connect with the fans. However they need to do it, everybody does it different. Some people do it with moves, some people do it with the body, some people do it on the microphone. It's, it's some, you have to connect with the fans and get them to buy you in a sense. So there's that saying that fans, they will not remember what you do or what you say but they will remember how you make them feel. Wow, dice que hay que conectarse de cualquier modo, de cualquier manera, según la persona, el talento a los fanáticos. Como sea la habilidad de ese talento de conectarse es importante. Eh, el, el, no se va a recordar el público, el fanático de lo que hiciste o lo que hiciste. Lo que se va a recordar más es qué le hiciste sentir al, 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 al fanático. And you touched a uh, uh, chap about uh, Hollywood. Then you go from creative, from superstar, from Latino hit, into the Hollywood world, how was that transition? ¿Cómo fue esa transición de ser latino hit, de ser estrella, de ser creativo, y de momento meterte al mundo de, de Hollywood? How, how was it from one world to another world? So I had a nice transition because I, tra I transitioned from wrestling into a wrestling TV show. I, rest, I transitioned to Lucha Underground. So Lucha Underground, we had Mark Burnett's people and they were incredible they were so good but they had never shot wrestling before so i was there to teach them how to shoot wrestling and i was working with cameramen uh directors uh sound people uh wardrobe set design i was working with everybody and showing them how to do it i didn't know how i knew how to do it i just knew i guess from watching the man and kevin dunn and everybody there at wwe for so long Then I transitioned from there into Hollywood, into GLOW, and they took me under their wings and I went to like the Harvard of television with them. Dice Chavo que fue eh, la transición correcta porque fue de lucha libre a un programa de, de lucha estilo Hollywood que fue Lucha Underground, donde tenía Mark Burnett y toda esta gente de Hollywood, pero ellos nunca habían hecho lucha para el Chavo. Era, era, él se sentía cómodo de hablar con los marógrafos, los eh, editores, los que estaban a cargo del sonido, del piso y todo. No porque ese chavo que tenía la experiencia por hacerlo, pero él cree que estando tanto tiempo alrededor de un Vince McMahon, de un Kevin, no, Kevin Dunn, para los que no saben, uno de los directores grandes del mundo de la WWE. Entonces él se sintió cómodo y pudieron habitar juntos. Y luego viene la transición a lo que es el mundo de Hollywood a través de The Glow, donde ya es un mundo totalmente distinto. And how was it to teach actresses to be the wrestlers so teaching the actors and actresses was i was not training them to wrestle at wrestlemania that's different we broke in a different way hugo where they just beat the crap out of us <laughs> that's not what we wanted to do i wanted to get them to love this this sport this business so i had to get them to trust me and love pain you know in a sense so I had to teach them how to do wrestling in a, in a scene in, a, in different because sometimes it's easier, but sometimes it's harder because you're not doing this, this say, for instance, this move, this power bomb one time, you're doing it 10 times over a six hour period because you're filming it from different angles. And then you're going to lunch and then you're coming back and got to get warm up and do it again. So sometimes it's harder. Um, it may be a shorter match, a, a minute match or, or a, a, a two minute scene, but you're doing it over and over again. So that's the difference. And not everybody can, can transition and teach that. Era difícil eh, eh, explicarlo de otra forma. Él no estaba entrenando a estas actrices o actores a que sean luchadores para un WrestleMania. Lo que él quería 
en enseñarles a hacer ese luchador, esa luchadora para este eh, evento, para esta serie de, de llamada Glow. Y entonces era cómo explicarle, cómo meterse en la mente, en la parte del corazón de estos actores o, o actrices para que ellos entendieran que si van a hacer un bombazo de poder, un power o algo, pues mira, quizás hay, hay que repetirlo como seis o siete ocasiones para que el tiro salga correcto en la escena que se está filmando. Pero era cómo el chavo podía entrar a ese mundo que era relativamente diferente al entrenar a un luchador para un mundo de lucha libre y cómo llegar hasta el punto de que estas actrices y actores pudieran desarrollarse de una manera que Glow fuera efectivo para el público que viera el producto final eh, en, en ya en la serie de Glow. So, uh, the, let me say something in Spanish for all fans. Para todos nuestros mm -hmm. fanáticos, Glow está disponible en Netflix. Es una serie excelente. Tienen la oportunidad de verla. Está actuando Alison Brie, está Betty Gilpin. Hay muchísimas otras personas. Hay apariciones de Carlito, de Chavo Guerrero, de muchísimas personas que pertenecen a la industria de la lucha libre. Está bien interesante y pueden ver esa transición de lo crudo. Vamos a decir que comienza Alison Brie, el resto de las actrices, y de repente muestra muchísima mejoría con el tiempo gracias al entrenamiento de este caballero que está aquí presente con nosotros. Pueden también eh, prestarle atención al podcast de Chavo Guerrera. Es muy importante que le presten atención porque hablan este tipo de temas que son tal vez un poco controversiales en la industria de la lucha libre y les llama mucho la atención a las personas. Eh, se llama The Suplexes and Cervezas Podcast. Está disponible en Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Anchor Podcast. Prácticamente en todos los formatos que tengan disponibles, que de hecho eso debe salir de aquí arriba una vez a Cobo haya editado la entrevista. Eh, también pueden conseguir a Chavo Guerrero en cameo.com slash Chavo Guerrero Jr. ¿Quieren un saludo de cumpleaños? ¿Quieren un saludo para el novio, para la novia, para quien sea? Este es el hombre para, para la conseguirlo. Suegra, para la suegra también. Uh, una, una, una amenaza para la suegra. Chavo es el hombre que les puede brindar ese saludo. Las camisas prowrestlingtees.com slash Chavo Guerrero. Esa camisa hermosa que dice los guerreros que te tiene alrededor, los cuatro pilares que son Mando, Héctor, Chavo y Eddie. Esa camisa está disponible ahí de igual manera. Uh, al igual puedes seguirlo en todas sus redes sociales como Chavo Guerrero Jr. Uh, Chavo, our next question. I wanted to quote something since we are in that topic. I wanted to quote Jay the Snake Roberts. He did a recent interview. He said, the talent today, they don't know how to get over. Wrestling today is all for the visual. In my day, it wasn't. It was, it was through the heart. It was emotional. I wanted to hook you up emotionally. The difference is the visual lasts a split of a second and then the brain wants something fresh. But emotionally, if I hook you one time, I got you for the rest of your life. So after this day, the Snake Roberts quote, what does the wrestling companies need to do in order to attract a bigger fan base? You, you hit an incredible point, which is uh, the talent need to do uh, more emotional, connection. more storytelling, connection. more connection. Uh, and less uh, flippity flappity moves, let's say it that way, less, less athletic moves. But what does the creative part, the bookers, the Vince McMahons, the Tony Khans, the, the Dorian Rodin from AAA, uh, what do they need to do in order to attract a bigger fan base and hook them emotionally? So it is different today for sure. Jake the Snake is correct. One thing also is that in the Snake's time, the promoters allowed the wrestlers to take the, to learn their craft and to connect with the fans. And if they didn't connect at this organization, in this territory, they'd go to another territory and learn how to do it as a baby face. And they'd go to another territory and learn how to do it as a heel and another one to learn as a tag team and another one to learn as a, as um, a um, manager. But now th those territories are not alive anymore. So you have, people going to WWE and learning one style and they're not, Vince McMahon is not allowing these people to per perfect their craft and get over the way and tell stories the way that, that Jake the Snake Roberts did. So is it different? Yes, it's different, but it's also different environment. The, the, the wrestlers are not allowed to do what they used to do back, back then. Chavo dijo un punto tremendo. Dijo, Jake, eh, la serpiente Roberts tiene su punto y él lo, lo respeta, dijo Chavo, pero eran otros tiempos de Jake the Snake Roberts. Eh, y que los promotores le permitían perfeccionar su habilidad bajo las instrucciones en diferentes territorios a su capacidad, ya sea de luchador, de manager, de lo que sea. Y había un tiempo para desarrollar. Hoy en día una persona como Vince McMahon no te da esa oportunidad. O sea, que cambia la manera que tú tienes que llegar a, a ese perfeccionismo de, de lo que es ser un profesional. Los tiempos cambian, todo cambia. 
y muchas veces eh, el talento se ve más presionado porque no hay, lo que dice el chavo, la disponibilidad antes de que tú podías ir de territorio en territorio. Y cuando tú llegabas a, un, a, un, a una empresa como The Burning Gang, AWA, o World Class de los Bon Erics, o Worldwide Wrestling Federation, de Vince McMahon, Father, el papá, o, o lo del Chic en Detroit, tú ibas y podías perfeccionar tu arte en tal sitio. Y cuando tú venías a ver, estabas listo ya para ser ese, ese campeón o esa campeona de, 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 una, de una década. I, I also want to ask you, uh, wow. I have the shirt of Eddie Guerrero. To me, to have the shirt, I'm always proud uh, of. Viva uh, Raza yes. right there, brother. Thank uh, you. What, what uh, besides the relationship that you had, uh, as I know you are, you're such a romantic of the talent of wrestling. How was that sensation that you knew that you had one of the best in your trade next to you in a tag team match? How did that Feel to you being a corner. ¿Qué se siente sabiendo que tenía no solamente la relación de Eddie Guerrero al lado de él y lo que era el apellido de la familia y lo, la calidad de trabajadores, sino de él, el chavo saber que al lado de él tenía uno de los mejores luchadores del mundo? How did it feel, chavo? So, we always knew that Eddie was one of the best in the world. I mean, we, we knew that already. Um, he wasn't really recognized as that. Everybody thought, a lot of promoters, Eric Bischoff, Vince McMahon, he was good. But now that he's gone, they look back and go, wow, he was, he was the best. He was so good. I knew just going, growing up with him, you know, we were just together and always wrestling together. So we just gelled so good together and he taught me so much. But Eddie wrestled with so much passion and he cared about this sport so much and he cared about the fans so much and putting on a great match all the time that – It was, uh, it was a pleasure just to be in the ring with him and learn from him. But again, sometimes, you know, he had to pass away for the whole wrestling world to consider him as one of the best of all time. He was the same wrestler as when he was there and when he was alive, but it took a long time for people to really see and go, wow, he was incredible. Chavo dice que él y su familia siempre sabían que Eddie era grandioso. Para los promotores, un Eric Bischoff, Vince McMahon, dijeron, sí, es muy bueno, pero... Eh, costó que se nos fuera eh, para que ellos pudieran darse cuenta wow, Eddie Guerrero era súper, era tremendo, tenerlo en la esquina dice, era, era saber que tenía uno de los mejores pero tardó más el mundo en reconocer el talento de Eddie Guerrero algo que el chavo, su familia y muchos fanáticos lo sabían después de que él se fue que comenzaron a entender lo que tenían y lo que no habían uh, valorado one of the biggest moments that I had Madison Square Garden, Eddie Guerrero had the championship on his hands. Uh, the event finished. It was a WrestleMania, and they had the WrestleMania post party, and probably around 1,000 fans and guests. And never forget, he was at the top. He was a champ. He was the main guy, uh, the main kahuna in, in the world of wrestling entertainment. And he allowed me, himself, his wife, the two daughters, in the middle of this whole big enchilada. We prayed, we held hands, the champion of Dougherty, uh prayed with Hugo, my wife, God rest their, their, their souls. And uh, wow, it was five minutes of one uncomparable moment that we'll never forget, because that man uh, was a family man, and he was a man of God. And I miss him, uh, not just because of the wrestling talent, but how grateful he was of that second chance that Jesus gave him, and how he made all of us around him Uh, that was part of his art. He made us feel important. Eddie nos hizo sentir a todos importante. Su amor por Dios después de ese WrestleMania, la fiesta al frente, más de mil personas. Y sacó el campeón, el más importante de Dolly Lee, Eddie Guerrero. Cinco minutos con este servidor, con la rubia, con Vicky, con las dos niñas. Y oramos a Jesús. Y lo que hacía grande a Eddie no era solamente lo que hacía en el ring Eddie Guerrero, sino que hacía a las personas alrededor de él sentir tan importante. Y ese es uno de los recuerdos que yo tengo The Eddie. Uh, Michael, let's go over the places where our fans could uh, sponsor our good brother uh, Chavo again. Perfect, let's do it again. Cameo.com slash Chavo Guerrero, Pro Wrestling Tees.com para la camisa de los Guerrero. Mando Eddie, Chavo y Eddie, esa camisa está excelente. Hugo, yo creo que tú vas a querer una también. Ya yo quiero una. Yes. Pro Wrestling I will, order that, Chavo, I will order that shirt tonight. I will, right, right. I will do that too because I want it. As I've been wanting it since a while. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Chavo Guerrero Jr. De igual manera, pueden buscarlo en The Suplex X and The Cervezas Podcast en 
Google Podcast, Anchor Podcast, Apple Podcast, prácticamente en todos lados está disponible. Y de igual manera, seguirlo en sus redes sociales como Chavo Guerrero Jr. Y muy importante, una vez pase toda esta situación de la pandemia, eh, para todos los promotores que estén interesados, una vez pase esta situación y se estabilice más, pueden conseguirlo y contactarlo en chavobookings.gmail.com. Eh, obviamente en estos momentos la situación está un poco complicada, pero una vez pase de la pandemia... Chavo estará disponible para trabajar y estará encantado de ir a cualquier parte del mundo, Chile, Perú, Ecuador, Puerto Rico, donde sea. Este es el hombre que ustedes necesitan en su cartelera. Ok, Vince, Vince McMahon from Hugo Sabinovich, Tony Khan from Hugo Sabinovich. If you want the best, look no further than Chavo Guerrero. Creative wise, ring wise, this is the man you need to take the product to another level. 100% recommendation from Hugo Sabinovich at Lucha Libre Line. He is the Guerrero dynasty. He is a ring warrior, and he is so good at what he does. He is Chavo Guerrero. Viva la raza! Uh, viva la raza, you man. I couldn't say it better myself. Thank you, Hugo. Uh, so last but not least, uh, Chavo, what message can you send to all the fans out there that are looking to you as an inspiration, that are reading and looking the fa the history of your family as an inspiration to do this as their profession as their main goal many people are out there they want to do pro wrestling but they don't know how to start they don't know where to go what recommendation can you give to them if you want to do this business it's a tough business so get ready to sacrifice a lot you only get out of it what you put into it but at the same time get trained by somebody that is very reputable get trained by somebody good that's not going to just take your money and work Work as much as you can. The only way you, you get better is not at practice. It's in front of people. I don't care if it's five people, 10 people, 50 people. You work and wrestle and wrestle. And that is the only way to perfect this business is by being in the ring and getting ring time. Dice Chavo que hay que invertir en un en una buen entrenador, una buena escuela eh, y, que, y que tiene que, que saber que esto no es fácil que esto es difícil, que esto va a necesitar sacrificio. Y una vez que tengas entrenamiento, eh, no solamente con entrenamiento vas a, vas a mejorar. Tienes que mejorar luchando, que sea este chavo ante cinco personas, diez o quince, con un buen entrenador y metiéndole toda tu pasión, lo vas a lograr. Excelente. Eh, gracias a nuestro artista gráfico, Luis Cotés, por el arte, a Jacobo y a Jairo por la edición. Thank you to Chavo for your time. Thanks to Hugo for being our co-host today. I, chavo, we wish you the best of luck always in your career, both in ring and out of the ring and in Hollywood, we will be definitely tuning in and checking out to see if we can see you again in Netflix. Hugo, nos vamos con un poquito de guerra. Ahí está, Latino Heat ha ganado los eventos en quieren caer. Más de 20 mil personas aplaudiendo al chavo. Yari Guerrero, viva la raza. Beautiful. Oh my goodness, you guys are so good. <laughs>